Hi, my name is Aya Pickett. I'm a graduate student at Delaware State University. Today we're at White Clay Creek State Park and we are researching viris, which is a type of songbird, and we're trying to get some data on them, on their movements, and um, their abundance in this area. I'm Christopher Heckscher. I'm a professor at Delaware State University, and I've been studying viris at White Clay Creek State Park since uh, I was a master's student at the University of Delaware back in the late 1990s. Um, so this project has been going on for 20 years now. Um, what I'm trying to do now is uh, track the viris with GPS units down to South America. Um, what we really don't have a good handle on is the habitat that they're using down in South America. So the GPS uh, loggers will um, provide us with, with precise locations of where the birds are actually overwintering in South America. They do go down south of the Amazon basin, so it's quite a long migratory flight that they take. Um, and then they return to North America uh, to raise their young. So White Clay Creek State Park is a really important place for not just viris, but other <clears throat> forest songbirds. Um, it's a relatively large chunk of forest in the middle of uh, the Mid-Atlantic region. So it's valuable. It provides habitat for lots of different species like the oven birds and wood thrush and viris. This is an oven bird. Um, she's a type of warbler that migrates all the way down to the tropics. And we're out here doing some research with birds like her, um, trying to see like what health they're in. So we'll take what fat levels they have, what muscle levels they have, what age they are, what gender they are. Um, and yeah, we even can tell this bird is one that we re-caught last year because she has a little aluminum band on her leg that tells us that she was caught last year each band has a nine digit number on it, which helps us identify who she is and when she was banded. So we get a lot of really cool information from these birds. She's a female. Um, we can tell because she has an area on her chest that um, where the feathers all fell off because she's incubating her nest. So right now she's going to zoom off to her nest and um, incubate those eggs. So yeah, we've got to wish her luck. So this is a tiny GPS logger that we're putting on the backs of the viris. Basically, um, this little black part sits on the back of them, and then these two little loops kind of go around their legs, so they're just holding it on their back like a tiny little backpack. And this will tell us where the birds are going, and then if we can recapture the birds, we can regain that data and um, find some really cool information about them. Um, this one specifically works off of satellite data, but there are also other types that work with solar data, and um, I think there's a few other ones that I'm not thinking of right now, but that's what we're doing. That's one of the main things that we're doing with this project, is putting these tiny little backpacks on these birds um, to figure out where they're going. So um, in addition to affixing uh, GPS loggers to viris here at White Clay Creek, we're also monitoring nests. Um, we're taking measurements on the birds to assess their health over time. Um, if something were to, uh, to happen to the birds, we might be able to detect it ahead of time, and then perhaps there could be something that we could do as managers um, to help the situation. Um, it's really uh, fascinating to me that these birds actually spend most of, their, most of their annual cycle in South America. So it's like we really have tropical birds up here spending a short time at White Clay Creek State Park. Using our GPS tracking, we know where the birds were prior to coming to Delaware, and we know where they're going when they leave. So to call the viri into the net, we use a playback call. So basically we're playing a viri song to try to get the male viri to come in and try to attack this imaginary viri that we've created. Um, so I'm gonna cycle through a couple different sounds to see if we can pique his interest. So this is the song.
These are mist nets. These are how we catch birds. Basically, the idea is that the birds just can't see them, so they fly right in like this, and then they just kind of like hang down in this pocket like a little hammock, and then we come and extract them once we find them. So hopefully, we'll catch something. It looks like maybe not, but we'll see. So this is a wood thrush, and I know wood thrush are size 1A, which is kind of like one of our bigger sizes that we use, for songbirds anyway. So 2891, 42858. Can we do an age one? I am. And what else am I missing? Just to see if I can. Forty six point four seven. It's really fascinating to be able to have a, a veery in your hand or see a veery on a nest at White Clay Creek State Park and know that two weeks earlier it was on a mountaintop in South America. Um, so that's the kind of data that we're getting. And it's, it's, uh, it's important to make the link. Um, you know, we, we think about things that happen in the Amazon basin like fires and drought and deforestation as being far away, but it affects things that we're experiencing here in Delaware. So. Um, what well, I like to tell people what happens in the Amazon happens at White Clay Creek State Park. Um, so the data that we're getting is really valuable because it can pinpoint precise locations where the birds are spending the winter in South America. And uh, if there's something like wildfires in South America like there were last year that made a lot of headlines, uh, we can see if our birds are being affected um, by what's going on in South America.